Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, whenever you're watching. It's Mike Young and Denise Young, and we are out here doing our daily vigorous aerobic exercise, and we're gonna give a, a nice overview, I think, of something you may not be familiar with at all, which is Herbert Shelton, Herbert or Herbert, and the human hygienic diet and natural hygiene, which is a precursor to everything we've been talking about. It's like the original text, like the Bible or whatever, I guess. And we have a little article here to explain it, so Denise is gonna read that. Does Herbert Shelton's natural hygiene and human hygienic diet optimize health? Natural hygiene and the human hygienic diet. Natural hygiene is a healthcare approach that has been around for over a century. It was developed by Dr. Herbert Shelton, who was a neuropathic doctor and health educator. Okay, and if you're not familiar with neuropathic doctors, that's like the, the opposite extreme of Western medicine, I'd say, right? That's the w easiest way to explain it. So, oh, sorry, it's a naturopathic. Not naturopathic. Neuropathic. naturopathic. Yeah, that's called a neurologist. If you're naturopathic. Neuro well, either way, it's like a DO versus a, an MD type of a thing. It's like Western medicine is based on the pharmaceutical model. This is just basic information in case you don't know it, where you're managing symptoms, but the natural methods or other methods like DO, naturopathy and things like this, similar thing concepts deal with finding the root cause typically through lifestyle and food. All right, that's typically what it is. Whereas an MD will be more likely to prescribe medication and surgery. Yeah, no, we don't know why this is happening, but here's some pills. <laughs> Keep coming back and eventually you'll go under the knife. Let's just take that gallbladder out. See what <laughs> Natural hygiene is a holistic approach to health that seeks to find the least invasive measures necessary for symptom management or resolution. Or okay, oh, okay. Well, don't you think everyone should do that? The least invasive? Yeah. So in other words, other ways, other modalities are not following least invasive. Just keep that in mind. They're taking out organs and prescribing pharmaceuticals. Thus, encouraging minimal use of drugs and surgery. The human hygienic diet is a key component of natural hygiene, which is a plant-based diet that emphasizes raw fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. The goal of natural hygiene is to optimize human health by promoting the body's natural healing mechanisms. Okay. Notice also that the, the diet says they, they um, it highlights uh, raw foods, right? It doesn't say yeah. it's exclusive of raw foods. It's kind of like yeah. the diet that we talk about. And if you want to get, know what that is exactly, go get our free book, Live 250. It's liveto150.org. And chapter 42 talks about what we believe is the best diet. And it, it's actually based on all this work this, from 100 years ago. Yeah. I don't think it mentions this in the article, but when you cook food, you destroy a lot of its nutritional value. So natural hygiene is based on the idea that the body has an innate ability to heal itself. Yeah, and that's <laughs> all in the book too. All, I talk about that all the time and balance, the concept of balance. Yeah, the human hygienic diet is designed to support this natural healing process by providing the body with the nutrients it needs to function optimally. The diet is rich in vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, which help protect the, bod the body from disease and promote overall health. The diet is also high in fiber, which helps to promote healthy digestion and elimination. And no, most people, 95%, do not get enough fiber on a daily basis. Yeah. So that not only causes constipation, but you're not eliminating all the toxins from your body. Yeah, and we just did. Yeah, we did an article on that, right? On um, what was it called? Uh, mucoid plaque. Yeah, mucoid plaque. The controversy surrounding mucoid plaque, whether it's real or not, or a thing or not, it doesn't matter. The idea is, is, is all that shit literally flowing through your system, or is it getting stopped up? That's the problem. In addition to the human hygienic diet, natural hygiene also emphasizes other lifestyle factors that can optimize human health. These include getting enough sleep. Michael, he likes to keep me up late at night playing with his phone, screen lighting up the whole room. I get enough sleep for me. Getting <laughs> oh, enough yeah. sleep, it doesn't say get a minimum up. It right. it's, it's depends on keeping your, it's all the whole idea of, like they said, the body healing itself, keeping your body in balance, doing the, the thing that will cause the least amount of harm, least invasive anything, you know, and then then you're you're at optimal health. 
for him, enough sleep is five hours. So for me, enough is eight or nine, depending on what I did the previous day. Exercising regularly, That's which we do seven days a week, and managing stress, like uh, my mean boss, uh -oh. <laughs> and avoiding harmful substances like tobacco and alcohol. It, it, yeah, those are both harmful. By yeah. focusing on these lifestyle factors, natural hygiene seeks to create an environment that is conducive to optimal health. Why the general population and the medical industry haven't adopted natural hygiene? <laughs> yeah, I asked some good questions in here. <laughs> yeah, probably because there's no profit in it. Despite the many benefits of natural hygiene, it has not been widely adopted by the general population or the medical industry. <laughs> squirrels were playing yeah. in the road ahead squirrels of us. Right there. there are several reasons for this. First, natural not hygiene is not well known or well understood by most people. Many people are not aware of the benefits of a plant-based diet or the importance of yeah. lifestyle factors. When's the first time you heard of this natural hygiene or human hygienic diet? I'm just I curious. I heard it at the Amazon Fruit Festival, which you, you had to go all the way to Southeast Ecuador <laughs> for. Oh my gosh. That was the first place I heard about it. <laughs> yeah, so it's not widely known. It's a thing. The internet, we got all our phones. You're probably watching this on a phone. Hopefully you're not sitting down. Uh, but, you know, it's just not, it's kind of crazy that all this information is out there and people are still just hearing about this. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, I also heard it uh, on the natu on the holistic holiday at sea, which is okay. a very expensive all vegan cruise. <laughs> so it's, some people were mentioning that it, it started out with a, a hiking diet. Oh, no, that, actually, no, that's different. That's macrobiotic. Oh, you're you're confusing. That, they don't mention it at all, actually. Because I, I never even heard of it there. Yeah, the, that's another thing. Macrobiotic is a different thing. We could do an article on one of those, uh, that in the future, but that's nowhere near as comprehensive as this. This is like the real deal. Yeah, we should do an article on macrobiotic diets because it's all about what food you should eat with other food and not mix them up. Food combining, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Second, the medical industry is focused on treating symptoms rather than addressing the underlying causes of disease. This means that drugs and surgery are often used to manage symptoms rather than addressing the root cause of the problem. Finally, there is a lack of funding for research into natural hygiene and other holistic approaches to health. I also want to mention we have a cruise. It's called Health Optimization Cruise, which is basically all about this. We're, going to t we're probably going to teach a class about this yeah. on the cruise because people need to know about this. Go to healthoptimizationcruise.org. Why natural hygiene isn't taught in schools? <laughs> if natural hygiene is so beneficial, why isn't it taught in schools to all students? Yeah, why? <laughs> there are several barriers to the adoption of natural hygiene in schools. First, there's a lack of awareness and understanding of natural hygiene among educators and administrators. Second, there is a lack of funding for programs that promote natural hygiene. Finally, there's a lack of political will to promote natural hygiene in schools. Yeah, next thing you know, they're going to teach a personal finance in school, too. Yeah, and then we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll lose all our slave laborers. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wage slaves. What must be done to change this? To promote the adoption of natural hygiene, several things must be done. First, there needs to be more research into the benefits of natural hygiene and other holistic approaches to health. The research should be funded by governments and other organizations. Second, educators and administrators need to be educated about the benefits of natural hygiene and how it could be incorporated into school curriculums. Finally, there needs to be political will to promote natural hygiene and other holistic approaches to health. This will require organizations that are committed to promoting optimal health for all. <laughs> Sounds like, like our us? organization. Like a plant-based diet.org. Yeah. Yeah, and if you want all the sources for this and all the text, go check out on YouTube our channel where you're probably watching this and uh, just look for the picture that's associated with this around the same time this video was released and you'll find all the sources hyperlinked. Also, my own personal timeline on Facebook, Mike Young, uh, has all this too around the same time. In conclusion, natural hygiene and the human hygienic diet are powerful tools for optimizing human health. By emphasizing a plant-based diet and other lifestyle factors that promote optimal health, natural hygiene seeks to create an environment that is conducive to optimal health. Despite the many benefits of natural hygiene, 
it has not been widely adopted by the general population or the <laughs> oh medical God. industry <laughs> to promote the adoption of national hygiene. And, and, if you, and if you don't know, if you don't think the world is screwed up, just listen, that one sentence there explains the whole damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, more research is needed and educators more research and administrators. Is needed. Well, we need to back that up with real science, not just one book on it. <laughs> okay. Well, I thought, according to Dr. T. Colin Campbell, all the science is already bought and paid for, so I'm not sure what science is going to back this. Educators and administrators need to be educated, and there needs to be political will to promote optimal health for all. All right, is that it? Yes. All right, so let us know your comments. Let us know if you've ever heard of this before in the comments. And uh, let us know if you're going to go on the cruise, too, because we're going to talk about this more on the cruise, on the health optimization cruise. I think it's very important. Please give us a like, also, that helps us try to get this message out to people because we view ourselves as like free public education. I like this article says, we need to do this. We need to, to kind of drum up interest so that political action can take place, I suppose, because we don't get involved in politics. And also definitely please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Anything else? No. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.